right, here we are. We have everything connected up. The BeagleBone has power. The motor controller has the power and the Arduino has power. Um, the You might notice that we have a new gadget on the board and that is this 12 volt uh, power regulator. And um, unfortunately I was not able to get this little 5 volt power regulator to work reliably with the power tool batteries. Um, because the power tool batteries in series have a tendency to go into a little bit of a resonance while regulating the power output and so the little 5 volt power regulator would blow and I found a way to get it to work um, if I connect everything in the right order and power things on like one by one I it didn't blow but if I connected everything up at the same time there would be a voltage spike uh, between the batteries and the little 5 volt power regulator couldn't handle that. So I have installed a 12 volt power regulator that is connected now in between the series of the two batteries which is now powering this little 5 volt regulator which is powering the BeagleBone. A little bit of a complication there and perhaps unnecessary if I had not chosen the power tool batteries I wouldn't have had that problem if I had chosen just normal LiPo battery packs they would not have done this so anyway it works uh, we have power and let's see if we can connect to the BeagleBone and get the motors running alright so here we are we have the BeagleBone on the table next to the computer and that's because we can't get the BeagleBone to connect to the Wi-Fi without setting up the Wi-Fi. So we have to bootstrap it a little bit. Fortunately, the BeagleBone has a feature where it can uh, it delivers a network adapter through the serial cable, the power serial cable. And as you can see here, I have powered up the BeagleBone with uh, my computer, attached the serial cable through uh, from the computer to the BeagleBone. And um, when the BeagleBone has booted up, you'll be able to uh, SSH into the BeagleBone through the cable. And that is very useful, because then you don't need to set up a screen, a keyboard, and all that stuff. If you have a Raspberry Pi, though, you will need to do this. You'll need to boot up the Raspberry Pi on its own, and connect it to a Wi-Fi, and set up all that connection stuff. But here on the BeagleBone, we don't have to do that. Alright, so here we are on my desktop. The way we're going to connect to the BeagleBone is through a desktop, a terminal app. Alright, so here we are on the terminal. And the way we connect to the BeagleBone is with a command called SSH. We have to give it the username that we want to log in with, which is Debian. And we write at and the IP address for the BeagleBone through the serial adapter, which is 192.168.7.2. It'll ask for password. Once you type in the password, which is it is uh, provided um, in the welcome message here, uh, TEMP PWD, that is the default password for the BeagleBone, you uh, are now logged in and now we can run a command called IPA, like that, and that will list all the network adapters on the device. But there's no VLAN, so let's just connect a Wi-Fi adapter to the, the BeagleBone. All right, and here is the BeagleBone. Let's attach the Wi-Fi dongle to the BeagleBone. There we go. And let's get back to the terminal. All right, and we're back on the terminal. If we write ip.a now, or ip space a now, you will see that there's a VLAN adapter right here. It doesn't have any IP address yet because we haven't connected it to any network. The way you do that is with a, a command called uh, conman ctl. So you write sudo conman ctl in order to Run the command CTL with admin privileges. The password is TEMPTWD. And now we're in here. So what we can do now is we can enable Wi-Fi. 
and it's already enabled. Let's do disable uh, uh, tether Wi-Fi disabled off and it's already disabled. Let's set the agent to on and the agent is registered. Now we can uh, list the services services and it already has the services in the list if you're too fast it won't have them and you don't have to write scan wi-fi and then you can uh, list the services the network we want to connect to is the one that's called new the new jorge in this case and so you can write connect and just can't type and let's paste that in here and it asks for the passphrase uh, and now it should be connected yes and let's configure it to auto connect to this network configure config that one auto connect on so now if as soon as the machine uh the beagle bone boots up and is um, is booted it will also connect to this wi-fi adapter and um, this can be seen now if i list the services ar is uh, now um, typed out in front of the uh, new jorge which means that it will be auto connecting to that when the mesh, uh, the beagle bone is powered on all right, let's exit out of this and let's write IPA. Now you can see the VLAN zero has an actual IP address, 192.168.4 and 167. And that is not the IP address we are connected to now. We are connected to 192.168.7.2. And so let's try and connect uh, through that one instead. Let's exit out. Now I'm back on my computer and let's say SSH and Debian add 192.168.4 and it was 167 like that and it's asking for password it's TEMP PWD Right, and now we're on the beagle bow through the Wi-Fi adapter and not the serial port. And that's really good because now we can attach the beagle bone to the robot and have it powered by the batteries. And once it's booted up, it'll automatically connect to the Wi-Fi and we will be able to connect to the beagle bone through SSH through the Wi-Fi connection. So let's connect it back to the robot. All right, here we are. The beagle bone is now connected again to the robot. It's powered on. The Wi-Fi adapter is installed through the USB hub. And when the beagle bone is booted up, it should begin lighting and blinking from the Wi-Fi adapter. It is doing that right now, as you can see, which means that the beagle bone on the robot powered by the batteries is now available on the Wi-Fi network. Let's go back to the computer. All right, here we are back on the computer. Let's connect to the BeagleBone. SSH Debian add 192.168.4.167 and the password. There we go. It's a little bit annoying to type the password every time we need to get into the uh, BeagleBone. So what we can do is we can um, we can register our user with the BeagleBone with a command called SSH copy ID. So let's exit out. What you do is you write SSH dash copy ID. Then you write the same thing when we do as we when we log in to SSH Debian add. IP address one nine two one six eight four one six seven 
And now it asks for the password again, T E M P P W D. Ah, I wrote it wrong. There we go. So now uh, I am uh, authenticated to log in on the BeagleBone through SSH. Uh, so now if I say SSH, Debian, add, add, 192.168.467. Now I log in automatically like that. I don't have to type the password, which is convenient. Another thing that's annoying is to typing that IP address all the time. So what we can do is we can um, make, make our own or host mapping on our machine. Uh, we do that. Uh, with, uh, we can edit uh, that uh, the file for this with nano. The file is in a folder uh, called slash etc and it's called hosts. In here, you can see I've already registered the machine now here with 192.168.4.1267 and I've called it BBB. W, which means people bone black Wi-Fi. So now what I can do is I can SSH into the Beagle Bone with SSH BBB W. All right, here I am from the future. I'm editing the video, and I just noticed that I logged into the Beagle Bone with my own username and not Debian, as I've been doing previously. And this makes it easier, even easier, to log into your BeagleBone with SSH. So that's what I do on all my servers. I set up the same username so that I can switch between uh, servers and machines um, easily. And there you go. I didn't have to type passwords. I didn't have to remember convoluted IP addresses or anything like that. I can now step in and out of the BeagleBone like that. Another smart thing I can do is I can go on to the BeagleBone uh, the file system with the normal file manager by typing up in the file dialog sftp colon slash slash bbbw and now I'm on the file system on the BeagleBone. All right, this is all for now. We've set up the BeagleBone on the robot so that it connects to the network automatically. We've set it up to connect to the Arduino and we are now ready to begin setting up the development platform so that we can um, use the BeagleBone to control the Arduino and the motors. This will be the subject of the next video in this series.